Femi, sorry, we've been keeping you holding on the line there. Look, Alex obviously was saying that essentially there clearly it's better to be out of the EU uh, if you want a vaccine. Has this vaccine carry on shown the EU's true colours that maybe it's a bit slow and a bit poorly led? What's your take, Femi? Um, You said that its behaviour may be deadly. Mm. I think that's an incredible choice of words, given that in the uh, as of the 10th of, of February, the EU passed the number of 500,000 deaths. We On that same date, we passed 114,000 deaths. Uh, if you do the math, that's 112, 000, 112 deaths per 100,000 for the, for the EU and 173,000 deaths per 100,000 mm. for the UK, which means it's literally you're 54% more likely to be dead uh, in the last year if you are in the UK compared to the EU. So first of all, this is a weird thing to gloat about given that we're behind in terms of ha- handling the pandemic or doing significantly worse. But second of all, we could, we, um, as far as the vaccine goes, hmm. the MHRA, the people who actually approved the vaccine said that they could have done the same thing if we're in the EU because the MHRA and the European Medicines Agency have existed along each, alongside each other for, for, se- for several years. So not only is it weird to brag about something we're behind on, given that it actually isn't affected by Brexit, it doesn't even make sense. You're just purely but- laughing at the deaths of foreigners, and it makes no, zero no, no, sense. No, 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 Femi, Femi, you're the one there twisting things because, first of all, you're an intelligent man. You know that the way that deaths have been recorded are completely different. And if you've been across the news headlines today, you will see that there's going to be a big campaign emerging now of how we've been recording those COVID deaths here in the UK, massively augmented. You know, in the UK, the principle has been if you've died within 28 days of a COVID positive test, you have died from COVID. And we're hearing more and more examples of people who have died from pulmonary obstructive disease, of you know conditions related to old age. You haven't even been tested positive as, as COVID, but that's gone on the death certificate. So that's number one. You can't compare apples and oranges when it comes to the statistics here. Number two is that comes down to metabolic health. That doesn't come down to membership of the EU or not membership of the EU. And when you look at certain countries in the EU, such as the Czech Republic, such as Belgium, who have equally poor metabolic health as we do due to poor diets and so on and so forth, you'll see that the deaths per capita are on the same level. Nobody's laughing about that, Fed. Nobody's laughing at death. Femi, just to... So, just, so, so, yeah, so, to, re- so to respond to that, yeah. um, you're saying that we can't judge the figures yet because it's on, it's on different levels. We already have the, the actual comparative figures in terms of the first wave, and the UK had the highest excess death rate of any country in Europe. That is simply a fact. That's not deaths yeah, with but, but, COVID but on I the think a big part no, 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 of please, that please, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't, interrupt, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't interrupt you. Excess deaths and deaths compared to um, previous years. We uh, um, so it doesn't. So it factors in all the stuff about metabolic health. Excess death rate. Ours was worse than any Femi, country Femi, in Germany's Europe. Germany's jealous of us, though. Germany's je- jealous of us. I think it was on Build, the front page. They said that they envy the UK now. I mean, if the EU is so good and it's handling it so well, and we're so terrible, it's a strange thing for the Germans to say, isn't it? Build is a right wing newspaper in Germany. The idea that oh a right wing. Oh my gosh, that must a, a, a right, make it wrong. <laughs> I, I, no, 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 listen, listen to me. The idea of a right wing newspaper supporting Brexit is not surprising. Well, no, but I mean, they're just based on the facts. I mean, we all saw the videos, didn't we, from a vaccination centre in Belgium that is empty. As I said earlier, you could have fired a cannon in there and you wouldn't have hit anyone. I mean, it's not great, is it? And, and this is when I said it was deadly, actually, Femme, because it's the EU's mixed messaging on this that has been deadly. I think they've played politics with people's lives by claiming that the efficacy of the AstraZeneca vaccine in the over 65s is, is poor. Uh, and as a result of this now, people are refusing to take it. Some people don't want to stock it. And and actually, you, you've got people there who could be benefiting from this. That's what I meant when I said it was deadly. How do you respond to that? Let me give you the three the three points that I, I'd, I'd side on, on your side of the argument with. Mm. I think it, it was utterly wrong to play politics in terms of the efficacy of the, of the vaccine, especially as Macron's not now gone back on it. I think the EU was wrong to... Um, for at least five hours, um, suggest triggering Article fi- Article 16 in terms of preventing the uh, um, uh, va- vaccines, which they felt were, were rightfully theirs from AstraZeneca, moving into the UK, given that they already had, had a contract with them. And I felt that it was stupid of, of the commission to try and take over from Germany when they were uh, negotiating um with uh, ne- negotiating with AstraZeneca to get uh, to get the vaccines, because I think it should have been done. Um, uh, well, if they were able to get a better deal, they should have they should have gone for it. Mm. But again, 
none of that changes the fact that we you are simply more likely to have died in the uk compared to the eu now if we're talking about playing politics into in in february 2000 uh, in february 2020 Boris Johnson went on na international TV. Um, it was, the, I think it was the World Economic Forum. I'm not sure, but it was, it was mm. on the, in February 20, um, 2020. Mm. He said that he wanted the UK to essentially have the loosest reaction to COVID while other countries were locking down, putting up barriers. He wanted us to have the loosest reaction. And then on the 3rd of, 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 Jan of, uh, of March, mm. he told us all to shake hands. And as I said, we ended up with the worst excess death rate of any European country. So, so yes, vaccines. The EU hasn't has, hasn't been as, as great as we have in terms of in terms of the, the vaccine rollout. But mm. in terms of handling of the pandemic, worst excess death rate in Europe, worst economic recession of any G7 country. To say to, to use this as a bragging point in relation to the EU, especially when the background is Brexit, mm. given the, the damage that's being done now in terms of Brexit, which, by the way, well, what is What is that damage of... so far then, Femi? What, what is this damage that we're seeing for Brexit so far? Because I'm looking out there now, the sun is, is, is rising over London as we as we speak. You know, I, I'm not seeing anyone seriously sitting here now thinking that Brexit is an absolute disaster. I'm not hearing it. You know, I, I'm Ooh. just not seeing it. OK, then you haven't spoken to the fishermen in Cornwall who say that they're their risk. Of, they fear losing their I've their spoken homes. to a lot of people uh, who've got a covid vaccine, though. And that's uh, quite uh, important. Uh, uh, and, and on the covid vaccine, well, as I said, you're more mm. likely to have died in the UK. But you haven't spoken to the fishermen who, are, who fear losing their their homes because of, because of the Brexit restrictions that, that have gone up since since January the 1st or, or, or actually have, who, quote, have turned to. Uh, I'm, I'm sure people have turned to alcohol because of the, because of this. You haven't spoken to the fact the exporters who are now reporting that 68% of trade has been lost with the EU's. Sorry, um, did you uh, just claim that Brexit's turning people into alcoholics? Is that what is that what just happened there? That was that was what, what the fishermen themselves have, have said in, when they were interviewed in Cornwall as a, as a result of the um, restrictions that have gone up. I mean, we, we saw fishing companies drive down to Westminster and, and park their lorries on, 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 the, on the steps of Downing Street because they were complaining about the damage that's being done to their industry because of Brexit, a policy that we spent five years on championing primarily the fishing industry. Not to mention, I mean, I, 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 Alex, you, Alex, you yourself have, have said in the past, um, what did you say? You said um, saving UK fishing is vital in the battle for Brexit. It's not being saved now. We're, we're seeing them actually protesting against it. We're seeing them fearing losing their homes, turning to, turning to alcohol. Um, and 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 several and several companies have simply had to stop stop trading okay. because they can't ship their fish. That's Brexit. Are you happy with that, <laughs> Alex? I'm not happy with the way that the fishing deal is being drawn up. Absolutely not. I wasn't the person authoring that deal, and I still believe that actually regaining control of our waters and getting a good deal for fishing is important. And we have actually done that in many respects. But as you know, Femi, there's a transition period into which the the, the regaining of control of our waters comes back. Now, what the EU are doing over shellfish specifically is trying to play hardball. There's a lot of complaints about this the other side of the channel with diminishing supplies. So mm. I don't think that this is a resolved issue by any accounts. I think it has been handled badly. Like I said, I'm not David Foss. I'm not Boris Johnson. I campaign for Brexit for the right reasons. I do think fishing is an essential industry. And like you, I'm a big critic of what's gone on. But going back to the points you were addressing before when we were talking about COVID, it's funny, isn't it, that you can say, I agree with you on these three points, that the EU have essentially created negative bad propaganda around a British vaccine, which could be potentially very injurious to vaccine uptake and therefore lives. But they shouldn't have prevented member states from going about doing their own deals with Pfizer, with mm. AstraZeneca, with actually, uh, you know, controlling the procurement of vaccine supplies for their own countries. You agree with that? But you're saying, well, that's OK, because actually the big problem is more people have been dying in Britain. That's got nothing to important. do with uh, that's got nothing to do with competences and control. That is to do with the nation's health. Yes, that might be to do with Boris Johnson locking down later, but that's got nothing to do mm. with Brexit either. That's got nothing to do with the EU either. So when you want to talk about criticizing the EU, you you agree with us actually that the way they've handled the vaccine rollout is bad. But banging on about death rates in countries per capita has very very little to do with membership of a political bloc. And I think you need to admit that. That's true. And talking about the MRHA and we could approve this vaccine, whether we're inside the EU or out of it. Yes. And so could EU member states own regulatory authorities. But the EU turned around and said to Italy, it said to the Netherlands, it said to Germany, do not pick up the phone to those pharmaceutical companies. That will be breaking the trust and the confidence of the membership uh, status. We need to go ahead and do this as a block. And they told those countries, stop. 
we're doing this, we'll get a better place, we'll get it quicker, we'll get it uh, distributed so, more okay. readily, and they so, have failed. Okay, look, so look, sorry, it, I, it, I'm it, sorry it, about this, it, Femi, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to interrupt because I could listen to both of you debate this all day, and they it said they very they important. Said they, they, it's factually wrong. They said they couldn't negotiate on behalf of the whole of the EU. They could have negotiated on behalf of okay. themselves themselves okay. because subsidiarity, doing they things close to the people, to, okay. you know, all right. if, if they'd done it on behalf of themselves, it would have been fine. Right, that's enough now, both of you. the whole of the EU. That was the difference. They were told not to do it on behalf all right thank you very much Femi Oluwoli their political commentator there obviously very passionate about the European Union but the reason I brought him down is because we're t- called Talk Radio and I wanted to hear you talking you can join this discussion 03444991000 text talk in your message to 87222 or tweet us as a lot of you have been doing we'll